in which country were most modern Newfoundland dogs bred? Watch the video to the end and find out the answer. The Newfoundland is a huge working dog with a lot of energy. They come in a variety of colors, including black, brown, gray, and white. They were bred and trained as working dogs for fishermen. Newfoundlands are noted for their enormous eyes, intelligence, incredible power, calm demeanor, affection for youngsters, and loyalty. Because of their robust physique, thick double coat, webbed paws, and swimming ability, they excel in water rescue. These noble giants are among the world's largest canines, and owning a companion that may outweigh you has its own set of difficulties. Hello and welcome to a channel about zoology in general, and dogs specifically. My name is Mr. Beard and I'm one of the hosts of this channel. I'm going to provide you with all the information about Newfoundland. If you like me and the content about lovely animals please subscribe to my channel. I promise, if you stick to the end of this video you will learn a lot. Let us start right now. Web paws and a water-resistant coat distinguish Newfies. The average male weighs 65-80 kilograms. Females weigh 55 to 65 kilograms. Newfoundlands have been recorded to weigh over 90 kilograms. They can reach a shoulder height of 56-76 centimeters. Newfoundland's approved colors are black, brown, gray, and white and black, sometimes referred to as a lanceer, according to the American Kennel Club. Other colors are possible, although they aren't regarded as more desirable or unusual. The Newfoundland's unusually big bones provide mass, while its strong musculature provides the strength required to withstand severe ocean waves and powerful tides. These dogs have a thick oily, waterproof double coat that shields them from the chill of freezing waters. The dog's double coat makes grooming difficult and results in a lot of shedding. The dog drools because of his droopy lips and jowls, especially in hot weather. The Newfoundland is a versatile dog that may be used on land or in water. The enormous webbed paws of Newfoundland provide its greatest propulsion in the water. The Newfoundland, unlike other dogs, uses its limbs in a down-and-out manner, giving each stroke extra strength. To keep fit and happy, Newfoundlanders require at least a half hour of moderate exercise every day. While Newfs are most suited to living indoors with their human family, they like outdoor activities, particularly swimming, and make excellent walking or hiking companions. Newfs adore pushing carts, and some even compete in carting and drafting events. Without a doubt, Newfie will win your heart. The Newfoundland puppy is lively, bright, and adventurous. They aren't fearful, frightened, or hostile in any way. Heroism is a hardwired trait in all dogs, but it appears to be encoded into this exceptionally powerful swimmer. Any Newfie needs to interact with people on a daily basis. Early socialization and puppy training programs are suggested to help Newfoundland become a well-adjusted, well-mannered companion. Newfs are often easy to teach and eager to please. Newfie is a quick learner who can do almost anything. They are also trustworthy and friendly, and they react well to gentle instruction, but not to severe punishments or training techniques. Newfoundland is famous for its strength as well as its calm and gentle demeanor. They are extremely loyal, have a gentle temperament, and make excellent working dogs. When started early the breed is easy to teach. They are fantastic with kids, although little children can be knocked down unintentionally. Newfoundlands are commonly referred to as nanny dogs in the therapeutic field because they make excellent companions. In general, Newfoundland is friendly with other animals, although its eyes might be problematic if it is not well socialized. The nice, sweet character of Newfoundland is so significant that it is specified in several nations' breed standards. Dogs with bad temperaments or hostility are rejected from exhibiting and should never be used to breed. Newfoundland is associated with a number of health issues. Hip dysplasia is common in Newfoundlands. They may develop elbow dysplasia and cystinuria as well. The breed has a life expectancy of 8 to 10 years, 10 years is a reasonable estimate. Newfie prefers chilly temperatures, although he can adapt to warmer conditions. Keep him near air conditioning or fans when it's really hot to prevent heat stroke. The thick coat of the Newfoundland needs a thorough brushing at least once a week. Thorough brushing with a slicker brush and a long tooth comb can remove dead hair and keep mats at bay. During shedding season, which happens twice a year, these sessions will become daily. However, spayed and neutered newfs shed all year and will most likely need to be brushed out several times a week. Nails should be cut on a regular basis in all breeds since extremely long nails can cause pain and structural difficulties. The high-quality dog food, whether professionally created or prepared at home with your veterinarian supervision and consent, should suffice for Newfoundland. Newfoundland pups need to mature slowly and steadily. 
feed a high protein, low fat diet with 22 to 24% protein and 12 to 15% fat. Instead of putting food out all the time, measure his food and feed him twice a day to keep your Newfoundland in good form. Any diet should be tailored to the age of the dog. Some dogs are prone to becoming overweight, so keep an eye on their calorie intake and weight. It should be noted that Newfie is unsuitable for you if you can't handle dog drool. The Newfoundlanders came from the same named Canadian province. The specifics are vague. There are three hypotheses on how Newfoundland came to be, albeit they are difficult to verify, as with other breeds. Newfoundland was bred and employed as a working dog for fishermen. Newfoundlands are linked to Irish Water Spaniels, Labrador Retrievers, and Curly-Coated Retrievers, according to DNA study. Fishermen and explorers from Ireland and England visited Newfoundland in the early 1880s when they recorded two varieties of working dogs. One was a massive powerfully built water dog with a longish coat, while the other was a medium-sized energetic smooth-coated water dog. The Greater Newfoundland, or Newfoundland, was the heavier breed. The Lesser Newfoundland, sometimes known as the St. John's Water Dog, was a smaller breed. The St. John's Water Dog is regarded as being the progenitor of modern retrievers. Both breeds were used as working dogs, pulling nets and carts, with the Greater Newfoundland also dragging carts and other equipment. It's also been argued that the first Newfoundlanders on the island were smaller. The working role of the breed was diverse. Many stories have been written about the heroism of Newfoundlanders in exploration and life-saving missions. The breed grew in the United Kingdom until 1914 and then again in 1939, when wartime restrictions nearly wiped it off. Despite the fact that Newfoundland's large size and liking for mud and water make it unsuitable as a pet for many families, there has been a steady growth in numbers and popularity since the 1950s. Newfoundland shares many physical characteristics with Mastiffs and Molosser type dogs like St. Bernard and English Mastiff. For example stout legs, massive heads with very broad snouts, a thick bull-like neck, and a very sturdy bone structure. Newfoundlands were part of the foundation stock of the Leonberger and the now extinct Moscow Water Dog because of their strength. And now the answer to the question from the beginning of the video. Exported to England where it was extensively bred, nowadays, most pedigree Newfoundlands are sprung from ancestors born in England, even in Newfoundland. Congratulations. You have learned a lot today about such a wonderful breed as Newfoundland. To learn much more about dogs subscribe to my channel and watch other videos. Please hit the like button below and comment. Peace.